I don't teach tithe. But I teach about the tithe. And I do not teach that Christians should pay tithe. But I'm not going to stop a Christian from giving tithe. I cannot stop a Christian from giving tithe. Because tithe means tenth. If your generosity is 10%, I cannot say don't give your 10%. That is the level of your generosity or the revelation of your stinginess. Okay? That out of 100%, when you imagine the work of God and the goodness of God, the space your heart can create for God is 10%. It's a revelation of your stinginess. Because if people under the blood of goats and animals were faithfully given 10%, then somebody under the finished work of Christ, which they without us could not be perfect, you two are struggling with them within the maya of 10%. Then it's either you are stingy or you have not yet understood anything. Because to whom much is given, much is expected. You see that? And that's the revelation of the New Testament. The revelation of the New Testament destroys self. It makes you selfless. The revelation of the New Testament brings out of you an expression of extravagant love. The same way you receive from God is the same way you release to the brethren. That's what this revelation does. That's what it does. And a lot of pastors think we're advocating stinginess, but they don't even know that they are the ones advocating stinginess. We are actually the ones advocating extravagant giving. Because how do you box Christians within the confines of 10%? With the love of God shared abroad in their hearts by the Holy Ghost. How do you limit that? In Acts of the Apostles, people sold lands and houses and brought everything why new testament nobody paid tithe in the book of acts in the entire transitioning of the church as low as they were in revelation with all their cross testamental application that is one application they never carried over they never carried over tithing never because the first thing the love of God does to a man is that your heart is taken over. Your heart. Except you don't know what it means to be born again. Except you don't know who Christ is to you. That is when you will be counting. Father, I give you, you give me. If I give you, you don't give me. I will not give again until the day you give me. No, you are not in a relationship. You are in a transaction. You are in a business. You are not in a relationship with God. Because if you are in a relationship with God, it's not about I give you, you give me. It is about you have given me all that I ever needed. There's nothing I can ever do that will be enough. So I keep doing my best in response to what you have already done for me. Are we teaching good here? Yeah. You can choose to give 10%. But do not give it according to Abraham or Moses. You didn't hear that. Do not give it according to Abraham or Moses. Whether before the law or after the law or both of them. We are never told to copy or do or live like Abraham. Never. Nowhere in the Bible. In fact, Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1. We are foreseen we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses including Abraham including moses they are compassed about let us lay aside every wave and the sin that does easily beset us and let us run the race with patience that is set before us look at the next verse looking unto jesus looking there in the greek is look away from moses look away from abraham look away from them look unto jesus the author and the finisher of faith so the writer of Hebrews says, look away from Abraham. Because if you look at Abraham, you will live in shadows. If you look at Abraham, you will function in shadows. Look away from shadows. Look away from types. Look at the reality, Jesus. Because he is the substance of what they hoped for. 
he is the evidence of what they were waiting to see or what they never saw jesus is that reality jesus is that reality somebody said to me dr damina i love all your teachings except that one on tight except that one on tight i say even that one on tight is because you have not understood it because if you understand it you will preach it more than me yeah you will preach it more than me. oh yeah i'm telling you there's nothing like extravagant giving in the church until you allow believers to give generously as long as you're controlling believers with a cane with tight card tight book tight record and you use it to be monitoring them like a monitoring spirit they will trick you and play you because it's why your man die why your man bury him somebody emphatically told me say dr damina i don't believe in your titan teaching no but let me be honest with you i have never been faithful in my church after all my pastor doesn't know my income I just removed the one I can give because my tithes are heavy. So I just cut some because the money will be too much if I give it to our church. So I just cut a little and give it. And they are happy because it's consistent. But I know that I'm not faithful. I'm just being honest with you. I say keep being a hypocrite. Keep being a hypocrite. Since you don't like my teaching, keep pretending for your pastor. You cannot hide it from God. <laughs> be free so they can serve God without guilt let them let people give teach them the love of God show them Christ reveal Christ to them let them know Christ leave them and Christ in relationship then you will see mad giving uh -uh. let the man know Christ <laughs> he will give everything that's what happened in the book of Acts they were giving radically no apostle took tithe. No apostle received tithe. Jesus never received tithe. No apostle paid tithe. No apostle. None of them. And the church is built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus himself, the cornerstone. That means what the apostles never did and what Jesus never did, we are not supposed to do. But they gave generously. Brother Paul said, you gave once and again. People were giving radically. Ah, look at the church in Macedonia in their deep poverty yet the liberality of their generosity abounded Paul said not as we hoped but this they did they gave themselves to God and to us they gave they gave and gave everything in the depth of poverty people are radically giving why they're in love with Christ there's no prosperity preacher that can get people in deep poverty to give like that it only takes the love of God in the hearts of men friends i can tell you the truth of the matter when people come face to face with jesus money loses value and until you reveal jesus to people you can't take their money even if you take it you can't go free with it because they will chase you they will chase you you promised us seven things that will follow that offering i have not seen one i'm still waiting it becomes a legalistic relationship and God wants it to be free a free relationship we are not asked to look unto Moses we are asked to look unto Jesus. He is the substance. I have never seen where people see Jesus and money remains a factor. Never. Look at the woman at the well. <laughs> Jesus said, woman, give me water to drink. She said, what do we have in common? What do we have in common? Samaritans and Jews have nothing in common. <laughs> Jesus said to her, if only you knew the gift of God, if only you knew who was talking to you, that water will lose value if only you knew the gift of god and who it is that is asking you water you will have given me your water and i will give you living water you never trust again then she looked at jesus and said are you greater than our father abraham that gave us the well uh, jesus said okay let me help you understand who is talking to you you are four husbands the fifth one you're hanging out with now is not even your husband she stood up and said no one could have told me this only the messiah she gave him the well she gave him the bucket she gave him the water she ran to the city she brought the entire city and gave to him when you see jesus money loses value look at jesus on the horse to jerusalem 
He's riding on that donkey. And the people in the city saw Jesus on the donkey. What was the natural response? They started removing their gold, their silver, their jewelry, and they were putting it on the ground for Jesus to ride upon. What about Zacchaeus? I can go on and on for the rest of this evening. What about Zacchaeus? Zacchaeus is on a tree looking for how to see Jesus. Looking for how to see Jesus. Jesus comes to the tree. Zaki, 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 come down. Today, salvation is coming to your house. A sinner, a tax collector, that is how God functions. He gives to the sinner the gift of righteousness. He justifies the ungodly. Salvation has come to your house. And the guy came down, short man. Jesus followed him. They went home, no conditions no conditions unconditional acceptance bible says when they sat down and they began to eat and it dawned on zacchaeus that this is jesus in the house of a sinner zacchaeus stood up and said to the half of my wealth i'm ready to give out anybody i have cheated i pay times four when you see jesus when you see jesus pastor stop manipulating people show them jesus and leave jesus with them he owns their hearts and where your heart is your treasure is once people's hearts can be turned to the lord the veil of stinginess is taken away what are you talking about the veil of selfishness is taken away when it shall turn to the lord the veil shall be taken away hallelujah